Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to my new video tutorial series. And this time we are going to be covering a ZBrush. ZBrush is an industry standard tool and I can't wait to show you not only how to use it, but also how to create beautiful art with it and bring it all together into Maya. So it's going to be a jam packed series. Let's go ahead and get started. This is ZBrush. You can do amazing things with ZBrush. A lot of people like to do characters, but you can do hard surface and things like that. The first thing that you will see is called the light box. This is kind of like a place where you get to select models and play around with them. And it also saves some of the stuff that you worked up in the past. Um, I recommend just to grab a sphere just to start off. So when I explain ZBrush, my first recommendation to you guys is to just take everything you've learned in 3D and throw it out the window because it has its own set of rules. Um, up at the top, we have alpha brush color. So you can already see that the menus are very different than most things. Most things start with file, edit, things like that. It does have a file, but we rarely use it. So up here is the menu. This is our tools, like uh, where we can control our tools. Over here, we have brushes, what, what uh, ZBrush calls brushes and things, alphas and things like that. We'll talk about that in a second. This is our workstation. This is where we work. And you can see that if I click and drag on my model, it will rise. And you can see that I've got what's called symmetry on so that it will, in fact, do everything on the left side exactly the same on the right side. Over here to the right, we have some navigation tools. And then very similar to Maya, we have what's called tools, but basically this is more information. It's like more menus. So when you're going to navigate, my recommendation for you is to kind of write it down on a piece of paper because the navigation is not the same as Maya at all. So to rotate an object, you're not clicking alt or anything. You're just clicking on the empty space and then you click and drag. If you want to snap it, you can hold down shift and it will snap it, snap, snap snap, snap, snap. If you want to pan, if you hold on alt, click, just drag it left to right. So the only thing I'm doing is literally holding down alt and then clicking on this space out in infinity and just going left to right. This is the only way I learned how to use ZBrush was if I wrote down the navigations because I was like, how do you navigate? So again, it's just clicking on the empty space that will rotate it. Alt click will make you move pan it. So that means I can move it up and down. And then to zoom out is alt click, let go of alt, and then you can zoom in and out. One more time, left click, like a regular click, you can rotate it around. Alt left click, do, 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 do. alt click, let go of alt. If I try to use my middle mouse, doesn't do anything like my middle like rolling thing, I'm using a mouse right now, it doesn't do anything. What if you're like super close in here and you can't get out, help. Well, you can press F, that will focus, right? Just like Maya, focus. Or again, I'm gonna get myself in here. You can navigate using this. I don't recommend it, but you can actually like navigate. So uh, for example, I can zoom, I can move, and I can rotate. So you're not you're not um, stuck in stone, right? But it's good to just kind of get uh, comfortable with these because it's a lot faster than to go over here. So it's not like Maya where you rotate the object around, you are the camera. So you have to think of it as a piece of clay on like a table. You are the one that move around the model. Okay, you are the one that move around the model. The model doesn't move for you, okay? So that's something that you kind of kind of get comfortable with. Okay, that's navigation. When you draw on your on your model, like so, uh, you can actually hold down Alt and you're going to get a negative. A negative means that it's going to push it down. So it's just like sculpting. You are going to bring some stuff out. And you can also push in. Now you'll notice that my geometry is kind of kind of low. It's starting to break, right? It's looking kind of kind of ugly. You have to increase your geometry count. Now ZBrush is super powerful. So over here to the right, I have geometry, and I can create divide. And divide will increase my number of um, geometry. 
Now, the tricky part is, is that right here at the top, it quadrupled the value. So if I undo, control Z, or actually, if you guys want to undo, you can actually use this little bar right here. Um, you'll notice that it says 11 KP. Those, it calls it points. Like I said, ZBrush has its own language. Um, instead of calling it like polygon count, which is, you can see it calls it points. So I have 11, uh, 11,000, then I'm gonna click on divide and now I have 44. I can click divide again and I'm gonna get 176. Be careful if once you start hitting a million, that's when it gets, gets a little, that's when things start to get a little slow. Again, it's all about the power of your computer. I'm gonna undo and go back to 44. And now I can get some nicer, cleaner marks. And again, if I hold down Alt, I can kind of put a hole in there. Whee! All right, let's talk about the brush. The brush will create kind of like a little bump, right? We have some tools up here. One is intensity. Right now, the intensity is at 25. If I crank this up to 100, bunk, you're going to get like a big chuck. If I crank this up to something light, then you get a little one. So that's how you can control the depth. So you can control the Z depth using this. Um, you also have this draw size. The draw size is exactly what it sounds like. You want a big brush or do you want a little brush? If I get a little brush, I can get small details. Whee! Of course, my intensity is pretty intense, but I can get some interesting details with this. If I hold on Alt, I can get the negative. So let's see if I want to go the negative. Okay, I'm going to bring this up higher. The you see how it's, there's two circles. This is the focal shift. If I change my focal shift, and I make a, I make a, you'll notice that the transition is no longer um, like a smooth circle. It's like a step because that focal shift is the one that makes it soft. So it gives you a little bit of that transition. So one will give you a nice soft little lump or, or another one will just like, bam, stick it out without any transition. Uh, it really depends what you're trying to go for. So for example, if I wanted to create a hole, boop, I get. Can create aliens really quickly. You reduce my intensity, reduce my draw size, just get this back to default zero. I'm going to divide, divide a little bit more. So now I have 176. So now I can add even more detail to it. But let's talk about other brushes that ZBrush has. Right now, we're just call, we're using the standard brush. Oh, by the way, brackets work. Just like in Photoshop, you can make it bigger or smaller with a bracket. Whee. Over here, we have a bunch of brushes. One of them is called the clay buildup. Clay buildup is pretty cool because it acts just like clay. So if you like um, modeling humans using clay, this would probably be something for you. So you can kind of build a shape around it. It gives you like structure. And then if you hold down shift, you can smooth it. So shift is called um, smooth. So it will smooth out your geometry. So again, I'm holding down shift and I'm smoothing it out. So it's averaging out the geometry. So if I wanna smooth something out, I can use shift. So I'm just clicking and dragging with my shift. So again, I'm, if I let go of shift, I'm back to clay build up, but now I can build the form. And then again, shift. You can do Alt, so whoops, I feel like my Z intensity is kind of kind of crazy here. Uh, hold down Alt and you can kind of change the shape again. Shift, you can kind of work on it a little bit. And again, if you use, a, I'm using a mouse right now, uh, it's pressure sensitive. So you'll be, with a tablet, you'll be able to create pressure sensitive things. So you can carve out stuff, you can add stuff, you can shape it, try to get like a little bit of a, a nose here. Uh, a lot of people use clay buildup. Um, other people like to use uh, move. You have to have it pretty good size because it will actually shape. So for example, if I want to change the shape to look a little bit more like a jaw, I can just move it. 
right? So again, it's just like clay. Some people start off uh, building models or clay uh, sculptures with just kind of building the shape first and then um, kind of going from there. And what's nice about this move is that you, if the director is like, hey, I really want this guy to have a bigger forehead. I mean, it's really easy to just go ahead and say, okay, no problem like this. You know, so you can change the shape of the character really, really quickly. Again, there's a lot of options that you have. I recommend that you just kind of mess around with it. I'm just gonna show you like kind of like the ones that people really like. And one of them is called um, Trim Dynamic. I'm gonna reduce my scale. If you wanna use Spacebar, you can. You can kind of change your focal and that fairly quickly. And if you guys wanna create a little bit of those stylized uh, characters, you can fairly quickly by make by using the what's called trim dynamic it's gonna it flattens things this is used in hard surface but it's also used on um stylized uh characters and whatever you want to be stylized so it will actually flatten out things for you so it's a pretty powerful tool to uh to create uh like stylized objects so if you're interested you want to use what's called trim dynamic. It will actually flatten things for you. So I'm just going to mess around a little bit here. So now I've created kind of like, a, kind of like a golem, I guess. I don't know. I'm just messing around. <laughs> Nothing in mind right now. I'm just gonna press pressing buttons and showing you tools. Okay, let's keep going. Sorry, I can play around all day, it's fun. And the final one I wanted to show you, which got the, the weirdest name, but it's very powerful. It's called the DAM standard. And oh, by the way, if you guys are interested, you can quickly uh, choose brushes by, let's say you wanna go to uh, the move tool, you just click on M and then you will, it just kind of shows you all the, the options. So you can see that M is here and then V would be the shortcut for that. So you can press V and we'll go to whoops, the, the move tool. Um, I know it's called the damn standard. So if I click on D, it will show me the damn standard. So the damn standard, I know the name's weird, but that's the name it is. It will give you some really nice clean cuts. Now my model is starting to break apart. Can you guys see how pixelated it is? So once again, I'm going to divide. Now I have 705 thousand polygons. So again, keep an eye on your polygon count. So the damn standard, what it does is that you can use this to kind of create cuts. Or if you want to, you can create uh, decorations. So it creates these really nice details and it automatically pushes in. If you guys hold on alt, a lot of people use a damn standard to get sharp edges. Now I feel like this is too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce my intensity and I can get some nice, maybe increase my scale here and you can get some nice sharp edges. So if you're trying to emphasize certain stretches of, the, of this, you can. It just gives you nice sharp edges, so it's nice and clean. So symmetry, all right, so under transform, we have something called active symmetry, right? It's, it turns on, it should automatically be on, 
But if it's not, you just have to click on X and that will give you, that will turn on and off symmetry. So if you want to maybe focus on one side that has maybe like scratches, um, you can just turn off the symmetry. It only affects the one side. You can turn them all on and then you can go nuts. Whoa, and it will do just everywhere. So, uh, but that's where you can find symmetry. Okay, so this is not considered a model. Again, I told you that Zebra has its own language. This is considered a tool. So you are gonna save your Maya scene, I'm sorry. You're gonna save your ZBrush scene here. So you click on save, save as, and then you're gonna place it somewhere where you can find it, okay? To open your scene is load a tool. So you save a tool and you load a tool. There's just three ways to save and you really just wanna save over here. You can save the, if you do save the document, you can, but the safest bet is just save your tool. Save your tool, load the tool. So let's say I'm gonna save my tool here. Um, let me place it somewhere that I can find it. Uh, ZBrush head question mark. Okay, then you can go to um, document new, new document. Okay. Uh, the nice thing about ZBrush is that you can double click and open it, but you're going to notice that nothing happened. That's because I have to click and drag. And then I have to click on edit. So ZBrush used to be what's called a two, it has a lot of history. It used to be a 2.5D, which means that it was meant for matte paintings. But people thought it had such great sculpting capacities that they were like, oh no, we're going to be using this for sculpting. So sometime, this is what happens when you just click and um, click and open ZBrush. It gives you, it looks like you're get, creating like a thousand heads, but really it's just, it's just duplicates. So this is why it's called on draw mode. I know this is confusing. Then you click on edit. And then you'll notice that I can rotate, but only one head actually rotates. That's the actual model. So if you do control N, it will get rid of all of them. And now you can focus. So that's why it's kind of kind of like messy because you can in fact turn off edit. And again, it's gonna tell you, hey, you're gonna go back to 2.5 D node. Are you sure? I'm gonna say, do not switch. But that's how, what happens when you open it like that. Um, the other way you can open it is just loading the tool. So I'm gonna go to load tool. Again, you're gonna click on it. Don't forget to click on edit and now it's ready to go. So yeah, if you get like a million heads, don't panic. Click on edit, control N, focus. Hold down shift and there we go. Well guys, that is ZBrush. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. Let me know by leaving a comment below. In the next video, we're gonna be covering how to import models into ZBrush, give it detail, and so much more. So I'll see you in the next video tutorial. In the meanwhile, please like and subscribe to my videos. That would be amazing. And don't forget to click on that little bell to let me know. That's your message to me, letting me know that you guys like these videos and you want to see more. Don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find free videos, free tutorials, free 3D models, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you for again for watching. Keep creating and I will see you next time.